All right, people, what is up? I'm coming at you from way north Phoenix, all the way up in Anthem. I'm headed to a call for a rattlesnake that has made a nest in a planter pot. Now, if you've been watching our channel at all, you might say, that sounds weird. I didn't know snakes made nests. It's because they don't. Put in your guesses for what you guys think it's gonna be. Personally, I think it's gonna be a gopher snake. Hi there. So there's a rattlesnake sitting in a pot, huh? All right. Where is he? Which pot do we got? Well, you can see him in the back. It's head okay. to the left. Oh yeah, that's actually a gopher snake. Okay. It's okay. All right there. All right, pretty big guy. Yep. All right, all right, chill out. Well, he doesn't want to go in the bucket. There we go. All right, well that's easy. Good stuff, I'll take him back to where he's not gonna startle anyone and where he's gonna be a little more comfortable. I'm out here releasing this gopher snake that we just grabbed out of a decorative pot in someone's front yard. This gopher snake is super dark and high pattern, which is cool to see. This generalist pattern probably does incredibly well in just about any environment. And I'm gonna get this guy out and show you that this generalist pattern even does great right here in all these sticks. I know it doesn't look like the pattern of sticks, but he'll blend in really well here. So without further ado, we're just gonna let him know that it's okay to come out. And there he goes. He's a little sus. He's a little suspicious of me, but there he goes. And we'll watch him disappear right there. This time of year is just insane. It's not just um, trying to get all the snakes that we need to um, and work with all the people that we need to. It's just nonstop. Um, every time somebody sees a snake, every time the uh, news wants to talk about something, every question, uh, all the thousands of posts on Facebook, all of it, we are there for all of that and um, it is a, it's a tremendous amount of work. I mean, I think in the winter, if you ever hear me complaining about being bored, I'm not complaining. <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay, here's what this is like. I'm gonna sit here, I'm going to watch a movie. I love doing this, but if it was spring all the time, it would kill me. Hi. Hey, how you doing? Good. You look like a guy that's looking at a snake. Well, I'll grab him and then we'll look around and see if I can... If there's anything more to the story. He's, uh, he's right in that cactus in there. Okay. How long ago was the last time you saw him? Uh, two minutes ago. Okay. Yeah. Is it a large snake? No, it's not. It's probably a medium size. Okay. Oh, there he is. I see him. See him? Yep, he's there. Thinks he's more hidden than he is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he scared my uh, babysitter the most. <laughs> really? Yeah, the trick is getting him out of here with it. Killing him on this cactus. Did he come out? Oh, there we go. Well, I mean, they're kind of territorial in the same way that we, like, if it's a useful spot, he'll keep coming to it. If it's no longer useful, he won't care anymore. Okay. So I think your challenge here is just your proximity here. You're right on this, this edge. Yeah. And this is the north facing side. So this is kind of the, you know, it's the first available shady, it's, it's patio yeah. basically. And, you know, so stuff like this, there's a pack rat that's using this. Um, the 
it's not the rat that's attracting the snake, it's the structure itself. So even if you kill the rat, this, this is what needs to be destroyed. So um, I would fill it in, get a rake, and just keep making it so it's not, um, you know, the thermally protected little apartment that, that they make for them. The rattlesnakes, when they live in there, they don't even eat the eat the pack rat. They, they it's kind of like it's like a roommate. Yeah, oh, really? Because they, they'll eat them if they meet them out there. Uh -huh. But at home, it's their roommate that always does the dishes. You know, like it, it carries the poop out, it insulates it, it keeps it clean. So they'll live right alongside them wow. in those pack rat nests. So they're very uh, important, especially here where they're used to not be. Um, before the homes were here, there weren't, there wasn't rock here. It was just that open stuff. So those pack rats are really important. Hey everyone, headed to a call in Scottsdale. A gentleman just called. He just saw a rattlesnake in his backyard. His dogs actually ran up to it, but thankfully he was able to grab his dogs. Um, but while he was doing that, he did lose track of the snake. He thinks it went into a lantana he has back there because he hasn't quite seen it leave that area. So I'm gonna go look around and uh, hopefully find the snake. That is so cool. He's getting a drink. Let's see what he does, if that's okay. I'll grab him a second. There's a skimmer right there? Yeah. yeah I think that is what are you doing, you weirdo? <laughs> that's so cool. It's pretty cool. What is he doing? Whoa, he's gonna swim now. <laughs> what are you doing, snake? Uh, it's a nice day for a dip. Yeah, it's not easy once you get into my backyard to get out of it. <laughs> so he's, he's like, I'll just use this pool. <laughs> hey, snake. <laughs> Let's watch you get out. You can do it, you can do it, you can do it. Pretty neat. Alright, Snake, I gotta catch you now. Is that okay? That was pretty awesome, Snake. There you go, in the bucket. <laughs> wow, that was so cool. All right, I got this uh, little swimming rattlesnake here. Just wanted to take a nice dip. It's not even hot out, but <laughs> it is funny that I walked up and it was literally it dipping its head in the pool. I don't know if it was getting a drink and then it decided to go all the way in and swim across the pool, which was like the coolest thing ever. All right, buddy, let's put you over here in this back right Down, 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 there you go. Big snake too. Oh, that was funny, snake. <sighs> Thanks for making me laugh. Nice, look at that too. All right, I'll see you, bud. Well, that turned out to be a pretty awesome call. I've never personally seen a rattlesnake swimming across the pool. I've seen lots of videos of it, um, but now I finally have, and now you guys have seen a video too. Um, so I didn't even bring my GoPro on that call, so you don't have the whole beginning part of that. So basically, he walked me through his house, and then he pointed to the lantana where he last saw the snake, and then I peeked over and I saw the snake dipping its head in the pool. Um, and that's where my phone video picks up and you guys see it swimming across the pool. So uh, that was a very cool interaction and I hope you guys enjoyed that as much as I did. Boy, somebody on our Facebook page asked if I would explain what a pack rat nest is. So I'm going to film me giving that talk about a pack rat nest on Facebook Live. I'll do two things at once. How's it going? Uh, I'm recording a YouTube video while I'm talking here 
Uh, Mark suggested that I discuss a little bit about what a pack rat nest is, since we're always talking about pack rats and why they are so important to rattlesnakes. So let's talk about pack rats a little bit. So that's actually a pack rat nest right there. It's not a bad one, I'll work on it, but you see that pile of sticks and debris that's down there? Cactus, leaves, a tunnel that goes underneath it, all kinds of stuff. That is a pack rat nest or a pack rat midden. Uh, they're also called wood rats or uh, neotoma, it's the genus. It's a common rodent in the area, it's a large rodent. And what they do is they collect all this debris, organic debris and otherwise, um, and they find places that they can make a nest, a deep nest, they tunnel in and um, enforce it with those things. It might provide insulation, protection from predators, any number of things. And they're very common out here. Here's another one. This is a kind of an older one. I think this is where I'm gonna go ahead and release the snake too, because it looks partially collapsed. Um, and uh, I'm sure other snakes probably use this. So why is this important? Why are these pack rat nests so important to these animals? Well, if you look around, there's not a lot of rocks here. Um, there's, there's no rock here. And before all these homes were here, it wasn't the most dynamic of, of habitat. I mean, there was, um, you know, trees. There were this kind of, you know, place where there's little shady areas, but there wasn't dense rock around here. So the homes themselves often become those those places where all that dynamic habitat comes from. Um, so when we're releasing snakes, we are looking for other situations that they use that can be a replacement for that kind of cover. So, um, you know, we're talking about where we're gonna release a snake. If I were just to go put it in this bush, that's cool and all, but as soon as it possibly can, that snake is gonna to want to get out of there and figure out what the hell just happened. <laughs> he was hanging out in a guy's backyard, now he's in a bucket and then he's over here now. What happened? We wanna to try to lessen that impact by using the types of habitat that those animals are going to naturally use. And in these areas where there's not a lot of naturally occurring rock or other dynamics, these pack rat nests are often those homes. When they're home, the pack rats are not really eaten by the rattlesnakes. I mean, I'm sure they do. I have plenty of video of, of them together and photos of it. I even set up a time-lapse camera once in a place where, um, you know, it was suspected to be a rattlesnake and found how often they actually come nose to nose. And so these pack rats are very important um, to a lot of animals that are out here. Um, scorpions, all kinds of other invertebrates, other snakes, everybody uses this. And I would suspect, I think if we were to actually study this, uh, and that's definitely something I want to do, um, we'd find that there's probably some sort of symbiosis, a partnership between pack rats and rattlesnakes to where the rattlesnakes are getting cover. They're getting what they need here of a place to hide and maybe give birth or whatever, get away from predators. And maybe in return, having a rattlesnake in there might stop a skunk or something from, you know, might make it think twice about digging through there to get to those little juicy baby rodents. So pack rats are very important to these animals. And when there's no other available habitat or you're not quite sure, this is the kind of place that would be good to use. And these nests can be thousands of years old too. It's not something temporary. These are in many times, many cases, these nests that are through hundreds and hundreds of generations of these rodents can be more of a, a permanent structure than a pile of boulders sitting out there in, in a wash or something like that. So that's why we're always looking for pack rat nests. That's why we're talking about them so much is that um, they're important to these animals. Anyway, that's probably more information than you wanted. Maybe it's just enough. But um, there's obviously a lot more to the story, but that is why we're always talking about pack rat nests and why we always seem to be running around looking for pack rat nests because, you know, we're basically looking for little apartment complexes in the desert that uh, have a really good janitor that takes care of the place. They also built the place. Um, they'll take a snake shed and pull it out of there. The snake poops in there, they will pull it out of there. So, you know, maybe that's why they don't eat them.
you don't want to eat your roommate that does the dishes, right? So that's probably what's happening here or what we think is happening.